I'll be covering video one, which will be showcasing data consistency between applications. Throughout this video, I'll be assuming the personas of various business technologists looking to integrate Salesforce with Wokato and publish these opportunity events to a Wokato PubSub topic as a message broker. Next, I'll be walking through recipes to consume these messages and create sales orders in SAP before publishing these sales orders back to another PubSub topic. Lastly, the sales order PubSub topic will be used to update the opportunity back in Salesforce. Before we dive into the demo, I'll start with a quick walkthrough of the Wokato interface. This is a Wokato home screen that users will see when they have logged into the Wokato after authenticating with SSO. This is my workspace with different projects where my team can organize my integration assets by use case, department, or process, and also control who has access to them. A project is like a repository for integration assets such as recipes, connections, and subfolders. Here, we have my project for order to cash automations with two subfolders that hold recipes related to Salesforce and SAP. Besides projects, we also have different environments in workspaces. So environments enable you to easily plan, test, and deploy automation projects. And this feature makes it easy to apply software development lifecycle best practices to automations. I'm currently in the dev environment of my workspace. Lastly, Wokato also has various tools at the disposal of the recipe builder, which can be managed from the tool section. Today, we'll be using Wokato PubSub, lookup tables, and on-premise groups to achieve the integration, and I'll be covering them in more detail later on. Now, assuming the role of a Salesforce business technologist, my first objective is to build a recipe that listens on opportunities in Salesforce and publishes it to a Wakato PubSub topic so that any subscribers can utilize this information. Inside my sales recipe folder, I'll be creating a new recipe by clicking the Create Recipe button. I'll be prompted to give the recipe a meaningful name, in this case, publish opportunities to a PubSub topic, and I'll be choosing to trigger off events in the application. But recipes can also be triggered from webhooks or any number of other ways as well. Moving on, I'll be selecting Salesforce as the application to pull events from, and our Salesforce connector has triggers that allow you to listen on events in real time, in batches of thousands, or even high volume streams of events through our Salesforce platform events trigger. Underlying all these triggers, we utilize various Salesforce APIs to pull these events, but all this complexity is abstracted away uh, for me as a recipe builder. So Wokato also uses machine learning to recommend triggers such as the new slash updated opportunity trigger, which I'll be using today. After selecting the trigger, I'm then prompted to select which Salesforce instance I want to use or create a new connection to a new one. Our Salesforce connector uses OAuth 2 for all connections. After selecting a connector, I'll then be brought to the trigger configuration. Beyond just opportunities, our Salesforce connector can also listen on any standard and custom objects which we pull dynamically based on the selected connection. I also have options in the trigger, such as the ability to retrospectively sync data using a feature we call Time Machine. I can select to pick up events from one hour ago all the way to the beginning of time for a full-scale initial sync. If relative times are not applicable, I can also give a specific date and time. With the selected timestamp, Wakato triggers also ensure data consistency through intelligent job to duplication so that no jobs are sent through the recipe twice. Alongside that, triggers in Wakato ensure zero job loss, meaning that when I stop a recipe and start it sometime later, our trigger will pull up events that happen within that time. In my second step, I'll be using the Salesforce connector and using the get related list by parent record action to get the opportunity products and quantities related to the opportunity. After selecting action, I'll start by first selecting the opportunity product as the record type. And this action then prompts me to provide the opportunity ID, which Wokato already recommends as the mapping through something we call recipe IQ. These are recommendations based on machine learning. I can also easily do this by dragging the opportunity ID data pill from the trigger output in the data tree to this input. After this is done, I can easily start testing this action from within the builder to see how data is flowing uh, within the recipe. After the test run is complete, I can easily see the opportunity data that was picked up from Salesforce and also see the various inputs and outputs for each step in the job run. In this case, I can go head over to this action and see that we actually picked up two opportunity items for laptops and laptop chargers. Besides search, our Salesforce connector also supports actions to create and update records, and also in batches up to a thousand. And if I have a CSV file on hand, I can use our bulk actions to upload and upsert millions of records at once. Lastly, I'll be able to select the PubSub connector to publish these messages. I'll select the Salesforce opportunities topic and be able to see the fields that form up the message. In this case, it's a mixture of opportunity and opportunity product data. 
I can then drag data from the output of the trigger and action to perform this mapping, such as pulling in the billing country for the sales region into the sales region input field. In some cases, when there are a lot of fields, I can use the group mapper function, where Wokato attempts to find the best fit between upstream actions and the inputs in this step. I can use this to map both the trigger output for opportunity data and the action output for opportunity products in two quick steps, instead of mapping over 70 fields manually. In other cases, data from Salesforce may not be exactly in the format that I need, and Wokato allows you to use something we call formula mode to transform data right when you do the mapping. For example, when I'm looking to transform a date time for close date to a standard date preferred in my organization, I can use the formula string format time, which has already been suggested to me. So there are also formulas for most data types, including working with complex types like arrays and objects. So let's jump ahead to see a completed recipe. In the finished recipe, I've also added a monitor for error block, which allows me to track errors that might have occurred and proactively send messages to my team on Slack and email. So once I've built this recipe, I'm able to save it and start running it immediately. And the recipe's job report over here then showcases important information about each job, such as the opportunity ID or account name. This is also customizable for each recipe by customizing the jobs table. Job reports allow you to then search for jobs when you may have millions of them, or you can also use quick filters to find jobs by different states. You can then also rerun multiple jobs with a click of a button. Now that opportunities are being published to the Wakato pub sub topic, SAP business technologists can now use this in recipes to create sales orders. I'd like to highlight that our SAP connector utilizes Wakato's on-premise agents. These agents can be deployed in groups to provide load balancing and high availability, thereby preventing a single point of failure. Here, you can see that my group has two agents deployed. Now, diving to the recipe, we first see that the trigger is listening on new messages in the opportunities topic and utilizing trigger conditions to filter only for events where the opportunity is closed one. Trigger conditions are available for any connector in Wakato to add additional flexibility for builders to filter events even further. In this case, I only want opportunities that are closed one to be processed. Next, we utilize lookup tables to perform data enrichment based on the incoming data from the opportunity topic. And lookup tables allow users to actually store mappings of relationships between data in one system to another. In this case, we are using the Salesforce country to get the SAP details at the correct sales organization. After that, this recipe performs data validation by checking on whether the account in Salesforce is present as a customer in SAP. And if not, then we're going to create the customer. And if the customer is already there, then we're going to update them as needed. In the action configuration of, for the SAP connector, you can see it's configured by invoking a BAPI. So when a BAPI is selected, Wokato pulls the metadata from SAP to populate both the API names and the human readable names. And this makes it easier for users to map without having to refer to SAP documentation constantly. The SAP connector also supports actions and triggers to communicate with any standard or custom BAPIs, RFCs, or IDOCs. After this step, we use Wakato's repeat loop functionality to do some data transformation. So within a loop, we use this to build a list of line items, which we then use to either update or create a sales order in SAP. Next, we use the PubSub connector to publish messages about this sales order to another PubSub topic we call sales orders. This is then used later on to sync this data back to Salesforce. Lastly, we notify the finance team by posting to a Slack channel about this newly created sales order. After building this recipe, I can save it and start this start it immediately, and I'll be able to see jobs being picked up. And when diving into a specific job, I can check to see the output to see a new sales order in SAP has been created, and this has been published to the sales order of PubSub topic with the opportunity ID as well as the sales order number. Alongside this, I can also have separate recipes that use the new IDOC trigger in the SAP connector to publish messages when sales orders are updated in SAP. Now, with the sales order PubSub topic, the Salesforce business technologists are now able to utilize this to tie opportunities back to the sales orders created in SAP. This is easily done with a simple recipe like this, which listens on messages in the topic and then updates both the opportunity with the SAP order number and the opportunity products as well. Moving on to deployment, after all, all the recipes have been built, Wakato admins can easily deploy these recipes from my dev environment to my QA or production environment. This is done via our deployments feature on the project directly, whereby I can quickly see the dependent assets such as the connections, recipes, and lookup tables, and even the pubs of topics. Also review them and then deploy them seamlessly to my test environment for UAT testing. Lastly, building these recipes can always be done from scratch, but you can also find 
package integration processes for Mercato's unique community library, which features over 500,000 pre-built ready-to-use packages. Here, the user can look for a package integration process for an application like Salesforce, or search for a business process with keywords like order the cache and browse the recipes that achieve the same use cases. The pre cap package integration process is a fully functional automation that can be used as is or customized by changing the business logic, data mapping, or adding or removing steps as well. 